All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do is I want to go over each one of these factoring problems so we can kind of discuss what to do for each one of them and what exactly I was asking so you could have it correctly solved. So, on the first one, we have. We have x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0, right? And the key words I said were solve. So a lot of times in solving, there's many different ways to solve. What we did with linear equations, right, we used inverse operations to solve. So immediately I say, can I use inverse operations for this? And since I have an x squared and an x term, I can't subtract the 5 to the other side and do inverse inversions like I've learned before for a linear equation because I have two variables. I can't isolate a variable when I have two of them that are not the same um, term or not like terms. So therefore, I look into saying, all right, well, I can't solve this in the, what I've done with linear equations. Let's go and look into my factoring technique, and that's what I've tried. So we're going to factor this. So I'm going to take this polynomial and write it as a product of its two factors. Remember, that's what factoring is, writing it as a product. So the first number you always want to see is, can you factor something out? Is there a number or a variable that you can factor out out of this that all three of these terms share? And do we have one? No. So since there's no number that we can factor, I'm going to use a little technique, which I call you know, like the diamond kind of method, where I take a times c and I multiply them. So remember, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 is our standard form for our quadratic equation. So I look at my a times my c. So I have 1 times 5, then negative 6. Now, to figure out what my two factors are going to be, they're going to multiply to give me this. I say, what two numbers multiply to give me 5, but add to give me negative 6? So the only factors of 5 are 5 and 1 and negative 5 and negative 1. So what two, number, what two numbers multiply to give you 5 and add to give you negative 1? Paige? There we go. All right. Now, since a is equal to 1, I can use those two numbers as my numbers in my factors. OK? So what I have here is x minus 5 times x minus 1 equals 0. But did we solve anything yet? No. What did we do? We just factored it. All we did was we wrote this as a multiplication problem. That's all we did. That's all we did. We didn't change it, or I mean, we didn't change the value of the equation, and we definitely didn't solve it. Remember, solving is find the value of the equation that makes it true, right? Or find the value of your variables that is going to make this true. So what we notice is if I have a factor times another factor equal to 0, we can apply the zero product property, which states if this times this equals 0, that means one of them has to equal 0. So what I do is I write them, set them both equal to 0. And then let's solve. Plus 5. So therefore, I solve x equals 5. And we also get x equals 1. Now, are those solutions to our equation? Do those make our equation true? Well, let's plug them back into the factored form. 5 minus 5 is 0. 0 times x minus 1 is 0. It's true. It makes the solution true. 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 times x minus 5 is 0. 0 equals 0. Again, now we have found two solutions to the equation. When you're solving, you're trying to find the solutions. All right? And factoring is one way that we can get to those solutions. Does that make sense? So that's what I wanted you guys to do. Those are going to be your two answers. You could also check it by plugging 5 in for x up there and 1 in for x up there, and you get the same um, response. All right? Any cool last questions on this? Yes? What's your question on the x thing? Um, yeah, I'll go and explain that the other way. I can show you a different way. 